All right, guys, I'm gonna attempt to show you guys how to throw some rings on an LS piston real quick, which would be the same for just about any piston you ever put together. Some are a little bit different just because of the orientations and whatnot, but basically all the same. First thing I like to do is take this ring right here, oil ring, this will be a center. There'll be two rings that go on the outside of it. I don't know how well you can tell, but there's some tabs. Yeah, you can see the tabs are at the top. There'll be a ring on the top of this and the bottom of that, and those tabs on the inside is what holds it in. We'll just take it. It's easy to stretch apart, throw it on. I'll turn it down to the bottom just because that's where I want it at for now. And I'll take another ring, another oil ring right here. It's real small, it's easy to separate, so it's not too bad to get on. I mean, you can take it and throw it in the first ring groove if you want to. Normally, they'll just slide right on. Put it in the ring groove it's going in, and then slowly work your way down. Try and catch your grooves on your, make sure you're catching your grooves and stuff on the uh, oil ring there in the middle. All right, so that's looking pretty good. That's all locked in. Now I'm gonna turn it. I'm gonna face my gap towards the camera for you guys. I like to go with the wrist pin on my oil ring. So I wanna face this way at three o'clock. The other one will face at nine o'clock on the other side. Make sure my camera's looking good. Okay, we don't look too bad there. And I'm taking a white lintless towel and wiping all these off before I put them on there. They've got a little bit of carb cleaner on them just to uh, make sure I ain't got no debris or anything on it. Normally I do this with blue gloves as well, but I didn't have none out here today. I think uh, we may have used them on something else the other day. I can't remember what the hell we was doing. But basically I'm gonna take it, throw this one down the bottom, and I'm gonna work my fingers around. Bring it down nice and slow. You know, I don't know if anybody actually broke a ring on one of these on the bottom, but it could happen. All right, so I got that on. I got the ring gap facing at nine o'clock on that side, three o'clock on this side if you're looking from my area. All right, now we're gonna move on to the second ring there, the middle one. And this is a Napier ring and they'll have either a dot to face up or a letter on on this case here we've got a letter i don't know if you can see the letter or not let me see if i can't grab a flashlight real quick which end up fucking my camera up i guarantee it There you go, you can see it kind of there about halfway down. But anyways, that's got to face up. And of course on the second ring, I'll uh, normally get my second ring facing at six o'clock, pointing straight down. And this one I'll just start the gaps, both at the bottom, letter E facing up. And I'll just slowly work it around the, I'll slowly work this around. Try not to get too carried away. And she'll pop right down on there. Of course the top one popped into the top groove here. Which sucks, every time they get stuck in that groove it pisses me off. be easy get it out you do want to be quite easy with that second ring most of the time definitely if it's not a stainless ring because it's very easy to break i've seen it happen many times many people do it all the time all right now for the top ring i'm gonna take it get my rag with some carb cleaner on it i'm gonna wipe it off and on the top ring there's always gonna be a dot that dot's gonna face up at least every top ring I've ever used always has a dot so you know to face it up now this ring is a uh, it's just a cheap ass molly ring 
These are all mall, mahal or mile or whatever the hell you want to call them. Rings, I got them off eBay for like 20 bucks. So it's a hell of a lot cheaper than getting the factory ones and they work just as fucking good. So I like to face this one with the gap facing up. And what I'll do is I'll get one side right here, like I'll start this side down in the groove, like so, and I'll just walk it around. Just walk around it. Be careful not to scratch it, which on the stock piss is not that big a fucking deal. So there you go. All the rings are on, orientations are right. I got a dot up, I got the letter E is facing up on this one. Like I said, it's a Napier cut second ring, which is good for oil control. And then I like to face these at, what I say, three and nine o'clock. Then 12 and 6, everything's separated. And then the gap that was down here, I turned it a little bit, and it's kind of, I think it's about 8 o'clock or something like that. Just a little bit out of the way, so that way none of the rings or the, none of the rings on here or the gaps are will, will match up. Although this second, this middle ring here shouldn't have any gap really anyways because of how it works. But anyways, guys, that's all you got to do. And on this particular motor, after I honed it out, I made a mistake and I went ahead and file fit or fit, fitted my rings in the block and then I used a hone to hone it out myself and I didn't believe I'd take out much but I took out enough to where the ring gaps were about a thousandth or so off and I think I ended up at like 20 28 and then I gapped the bottom one a little bit more just to match 28 so both of them are at 28 thousandths we'll see how that does with the boost uh, a couple weeks I'm going to order I think I'm going to order me a air to air intercooler instead of an air to water because I really don't want to mess with water or nice and all that bullshit to track and trying to keep it cold. It would be better, but we're going to order a 1300 horsepower treadstone core. It's uh, 18 by 12 by 6 inches wide. And then I'm going to weld up the end tanks and everything once. So that way it'll have 4 inch inlets and outlets to match the turbo. But, anyways, guys, that's all you got to do with the, with the pistons. Talk at you later.